Welcome back everybody to season 16. Yes, that is right. Season 16 has officially been released and obviously we're going to go into those breakdowns. So as always, consider subscribing, join my discord, follow my Twitter, you know the drill. Anywho, let's get into this update because there's a lot to break down. There's a lot to go through. So let's get into that. And I suppose as always, top 10 emergency awesome style breakdowns. Starting at number one, we have the season pass. The season pass actually, I mean, normally I would say that the season pass needs to be buffed but i think this one is actually somewhat decent right now up on the screen right now you can just watch me scroll through the entirety of the pass go through some of the stuff and um i think some of the aesthetics are pretty cool although as always decorations you know that all yeah maybe that could do for its own individual video but skins aren't terrible there's a lot more of that and then in the wardrobe they tease some more stuff coming soon so i'm going to assume that those are skins coming in the shop or something related to that number two the sort of hub area now this hub area is essentially where you're going to go for the main season area stuff this is where the season stuff you know aesthetic and all that takes place if you go to the very back far right side that is where the week one stuff will take place if you go to sort of the right but not all of the way back in sort of this swampy like area that is where week two will take place and if you go all the way on the left ish side near sort of this white ish area that is where week three will take place and the ai in the middle in sort of that bonfire cult like area is where I guess your season tasks where you'd earn season points and all of that will come into play number three family that ties right into what I was literally about to go to next so the sort of weird thing about the season is it's sort of like a combination of cults and family ish so essentially think of it like the season six AI quests where you level up these three AI's reputations and eventually once you hit the sort of like tier, there's four different tiers, then you'll have sort of a quest to do on the global map, whereas it's like go visit the zone, go do something like that. For people who haven't necessarily, you know, played the actual season six, that's roughly what you're supposed to do. For week one, you unlock this AI, which has some very cool prizes. For week two, you have that AI, which also has some very cool prizes. And for week three, you have that AI, which, I mean, the prize is definitely there, yeah, but I, I guess we'll say that's cool. Weeks one and two are definitely a little better, and I'll go into those prizes in a little bit. Number four, you're watching the gameplay up on the screen. It is the week one task. So essentially, the AI will have you complete this sort of challenge. This room slowly fills with gas, and you're going to want to shoot the zombies as fast as possible. That's essentially the gameplay. That's number four. You can do this to earn reputation but it's pretty slow compared to the method I'm about to describe. So how do I get that stuff to level up those AIs? The maze. So another zone that will pop up with the sort of season 16 stuff is the maze. Now the maze changes every single time. So if there's a tutorial video immediately on day one saying, OMG, here's all the mazes, that's clickbait. For what you're watching on the screen right now, this is my original attempt at the maze. I mean, it's not necessarily like it's an extremely difficult maze. The LDUE POV camera makes it so it's pretty easy to see exactly where you're going and where you need to head to. What I will say though, is regardless of what type or what version maze you have, because I'm sure all of us are going to have different maze types, and right now I'm just trying to get to a generalized stuff. One, make sure you have a shovel. Two, make sure you have a hatchets or pickaxes or stuff like that or resources to build such make sure you have wood especially and i'll do an individual video on mazes once i have more time to you know explore more of them get the recordings of more of them but make sure you have your shovel make sure you have your resources and essentially your goal is to run around the maze aimlessly until you find chests for one and two, look for false walls. They're sort of less green than actual walls, so you can go through them. What this will allow you to do is then activate a bonfire or activate chest. Once you activate two bonfires, one is usually behind a false wall and one requires like a trapdoor. Go between the trapdoor to teleport to another area which has zero false walls, activate that fire and then teleport back. Then once you do that, you can unlock the sort of key and unlock the loot at the front. Somewhere in the maze, there is an AI there which allows you to teleport out of the maze. But again, I'll go a lot more into all of the maze stuffs and strategies and all of that in that actual dedicated maze video. This is just roughly what to bring what to expect etc nothing too difficult just some bloaters fast biters etc but can't hurt to be prepared
So number six, what you're actually collecting at the maze. When you open these chests or you open that shovel area, not the bonfires, but like the chests in the maze and the chest out of the maze, once you complete it and you unlock that master key, go to the front chest and unlock that chest. What you'll get there is essentially the season items. So you can get stuff like the season three build cutting materials or stuff like that. And what these will allow you to do is level up the AIs for each of the subsequent weeks. I believe for week one, it's just the Fort Moss building material stuff. So make sure you have that stuff and you'll collect it while you clear the maze. As the weeks go on and more of the AIs become available, you should be able to get more of the stuff from the maze. It just keeps you coming back. Number seven, the fridge slash storage for building. So once you level up those AIs all the way up to revered reputation, you can officially unlock the fridge and storage for building. What these essentially allow you to do is think of it like the bar or the medicine table from the lab, although no one technically has that yet. Essentially, it's like a storage where you can store copious amounts of specific items. For the fridge, it will be food-related items, and the storage for building, it will be building-related materials. Now, the cool thing about the storage for building is it'll allow you to upgrade sort of your buildings, which I'll get to in a moment, because that actually is pretty important to keep in mind, especially going forward. But really quick, before we go into that, number eight, tree saplings. Yes, tree saplings are officially a thing in Last Day on Earth. You can officially grow trees in your base. So sort of like Frostborn, they literally carried the idea over. The number of trees cut down has been an absurd number since this game sort of launched. The game officially allows you to grow some hedges and young trees at your home base so that you can rest in the shadow whenever you feel like it. Eventually, the trees will grow and become a proper forest, and you'll always have some wood very close to you. In order to get these stuff, you need to go to the sort of forest locations and grow a sapling there. You can collect them there and then grow your trees, which will grow at your base. I don't think you need to water them, plant food or any of that, but maybe that'll come eventually, who knows. Going back with the storage for building, that is extremely important because they've officially added level five walls. Now, before you go burn the comments alive, level five walls and level four walls are still unbreakable. I do not believe there is any information about the metal cutter coming to last day on earth. Even poke the developer about it, they did not have any information about the metal cutter. I'd anticipate this is in preparation for the metal cutter coming because eventually, you know, it probably will come eventually. Because remember how I believe metal walls became a thing slightly before level three walls became breakable. Metal walls were definitely September 2017, and then raiding came the following year with the C4 and breaking level three walls. I anticipate there's gonna be a little bit of a window, and then officially we're going to be able to break level four walls. Can't hurt to be prepared. Right there, you're gonna see it's absurdly expensive, I know. Um, I know how we always hoped that level three walls would eventually be reduced. And then number 10, the last little detail, after all of that work of building one level 5 floor and one level 5 wall, you're only a tiny percentage to protecting your actual base to be unrateable. But guess what? There's a pack in the shop. A brick room for that amount of money. You better subscribe.